All right, welcome back to another episode of Drumming University. Uh, my name is Zach Treby, your host. So today we're going to talk about a little bit about reggae, all right, and mainly about reggae drumming, all right, and you know maybe this will take some confusion out of some of the reggae stuff that might be a little confusing to some people because reggae is a weird style. It's a great style, but it's still a weird style. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. But uh, I'm going to break some of this down very simple. So I'm going to cover the one drop today, right? One drop groove in reggae. And all that is is basically just literally a drop on beat three with your uh, cross stick and your bass drum. That's it, right? And the leading force of this groove is the hi-hat when it comes to variation and stuff like that, right? So, um, let's just get into this. Okay, so, the most simplest, or the most common reggae groove you could do, right, is uh, playing quarter notes, on, quarter notes on your hi-hat. This is a start, right? So, we're going to start with this, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Accenting beats two and four on your hi-hat, right? And that's what you have. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can tell it's a little faster quarter note uh, pulse. And you just drop your bass drum and uh, cross stick literally together on beat three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you know, you've heard this on a lot of like Bob Marley songs and Peter Tosh and all that stuff, you know, and we'll get into like the uh, different uses. Um, you know, as we go along, but I just want to cover, you know, the bare basic right now of this groove so that we can continue to evolve here and get into a little more meat and potatoes of this particular genre. So, as you know, the basis of this is two and four, right? Chick, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So, as the hi-hat has the accents on two and four, in rock music, that's where the snare drum will come into play. Right? But here, it's your hi-hat. So, imagine a rock beat, but with, you know, your snare, right? And your bass drum would kind of counteract that. Right? Well, here, the bass drum and cross stick is together on beat three, right? Right. Usually, when it comes to the bass drum, they bury the beater. I mean, they really stump on that bass drum, right? Like, they really stomp on that bass drum. Like, they want you to basically put a hole through your head, basically. That's kind of how the Rastas like to play this. And, you know, which brings me to a great point you know the majority of you know uh, uh, Jamaican musicians that play this most of them aren't trained I mean the majority of them or the the vast you know uh, history of it it was it was all literally uh, people that just wanted to play music and it's evolved into something that uh, you know just it, it it grew in and of itself, like most music does. It grows out of something, and usually it's from players that don't really have any formal training, which is not a bad thing, because in that case, you know, it, it, there was no... Uh, sometimes in formal training, there's, like, rules and regs that you're trying to follow and in your head, you know, it becomes a roadblock, and uh, so there's pros and cons to both, Right depending on what you want to do musically. So with the reggae musicians, I mean, you know, there is no formal training. It's mainly, you know, playing by ear, which is great because that's how, you know, all these great drummers like Carlton Barrett, Sly Dunbar, and a few others uh, that I'm going to mention, uh, you know, they had a huge, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um... Uh, a huge um, oh lord which word am I trying to use um, a huge contribution to this style 
So I mean, if you think about it, in the Caribbean, right? So let's 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 contrast and compare here. In the Caribbean, you know, you have you know the Latin islands, right? You have Jamaica, you know. So one of the biggest uh, similarities amongst uh, those guys is they all crash on beat four, right? So if if you're playing the reggae, right? <laughs> That crashes on beat four for the most part. I mean, you can do, you know, an Isaac Machali thing and uh, 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 crash on the end of four, right? <laughs> Which we, we're totally going to get into that Isaac Machali because he had a slamming contribution to the reggae style. So anyway, beat four, you know, when you listen to uh, uh, Latin music, right? You know, I mean, a lot of that is on beat four or the end of four, you know. Uh, I did a terrible job. Let me try that again. Uh, I'm trying to play my, my I'm, right now I'm trying to play Latin off the top of my head, but it's not really working. So, um, you know, if you hear the Latin guys, they all crash on beat four. You know, if you follow the history, it's a beat four uh, turnaround. I'm going to call it a turnaround because that's, you know, in this stuff, that's, you know, that's how you want to look at it. Um, you know, in, in reggae, right? Right? In Latin. Right, I mean, uh, 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 you know, th that could be on the end of one or the end of four, um, depending on what kind of tune it is. Uh, but it's usually not a crash on beat one. Although I have heard in reggae, uh, uh, um, you know, feels like this, right? or. And it fit really well. I mean, it was great. You know, I mean, uh, but usually the hip places are beat four. So if you follow that, you know, those guys had some similarities, and including the jazz guys, right? Sorry, that was really bad. So look at that. You know, everyone had pretty much the same idea. So, you know, definitely the jazz guys took some stuff from these Latin guys uh, and, and vice versa. Because uh, everything comes from jazz and rhythm and blues in a nutshell, right? And But we're not going to get into all that. You know, I'm just going to cover right now uh, about the reggae style. So let's gonna get into some stuff. All right. So with the hi-hat. Okay, since we covered the, some of the turnarounds, which we'll cover a little bit, a little bit of that later. But right now, I just want to cover some basic reggae beats. So we covered, you know, two and four on the accents with the hi hat, right, and beat three on the bass drum and snare. Now this is a little weird because as your stick is coming down for a smaller note, right. Your bass drum and uh, side stick are coming for uh, coming for a bigger note, so it's gonna seem a little weird, right? Right, that's okay. You can get that. That's actually very simple. Uh, but a lot of people want to play this. You know, <laughs> if you're just starting out playing this, that's what's gonna happen. So uh, to start you out, I usually just tell you guys to play just straight accented hi hats, right, and get this kind of feel. Right. You can do that if you're a beginner. Anyway, let's go past that. So, you know, if you've heard Down Presser Man by Peter Tosh, you know, Sly Dunbar does a really cool groove. He, he, he does something like a... All 
right? And he basically grooves through the whole thing. Like, there's, like, nothing happening except for that, which is great. Um, he's playing one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. That's all he's doing. And it sounds awesome. You know, I use that a lot when I play, you know, my reggae grooves. You know, I'll, I'll, ju I'll just I'll just do my little thing, you know. Right. Um, another variation you could do is the opposite. One, two, and three, four, and 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 one. And that's cool because that's a different feel, right? Cool, right? Cool feel. Another way you can, uh, you know, uh, vary the hi hat if you'd like is you can do. Um, uh, um, basically, you would leave beat one silent uh, because the slur will come come in on the end of four. Okay, so I'm just gonna say that, right? So it would be one, two, three, and four, eight. So we have beat one is silent, right? Uh, a quarter note on beat two, right? And then uh, beats three and four are basically consecutive eighth notes with a hi-hat slur on the end of it. And then it just it closes on beat one. So, uh, but clearly you would follow it up with, you know, a turnaround, right? Now you might hear that like as a two bar phrase, right? You might hear... Uh, Another way I've heard this is uh, um, uh, where there is a corner note on beat one, right? And there's no hi-hat bark, uh, but the hi-hat just continues that two and four kind of rock thing. So it would, it would be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. And they, they might put a bark every, uh, every now and again, a hi-hat bark or a slur, so they play right... <laughs> Right, so it become like a mini turnaround almost for like a four bar phrase or um, uh, uh, yeah, for a four you know a four bar line, it would become the end of the line or uh, I guess a four bar phrase if you want to call it that. So you know, there's just ways that you know that you would, you hear this in the music, and that's again as I always say, you go to the music to find out what they're doing. You know, if you really want to know the style, the language, you go to the music. Right, so jazz has a specific music vocabulary or language and so does jazz um reggae so does brazilian uh, afro-cuban i mean you know uh you know clearly everyone knows what this is like when the people hear that they already think latin clearly you know and then when people hear right <laughs> I mean, that's clearly a reggae thing. Clearly. Okay, so here's some, uh, again, getting back to hi-hat variations because, you know, we're taking this from the music. You know, what have the guys done that encompass all this music, which is a big deal, right? That's how you get it. That's how you get the style, okay? You have to listen to the records, and we'll, I'll, I'll cover that, like what records to listen to. You know, there's some great records, and... Uh, I I won't leave you hanging. You know, I'll 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 give you some. This is not going to be a long video, okay? You know, I'm just going to cover some stuff here. Okay, so to vary your hi hat, right? That's another way to do it, right? One, two, three, and four, and one, right? So you have two beats, right? Two quarter notes on the first and second beat, right? So the first two beats are quarter notes, and then the rest of the uh, measure is consecutive eighths, right? One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, right? Um, uh, you can do it. You can do an, another variation of that that I've heard. Um, how am I can explain this. There's a uh, a particular rhythm on beat one, one e and a, 
right? And then they just keep the eighth notes going for the rest of the time. And usually the the, the accented notes, right, are uh, the E of one, one E and a, uh, right? So one E and a. Uh. So in the first beat, you have the down beat, the E and the of uh, the sixteenth note, but the E is the one that's accent. If, if that's accented. One E and a, uh, two uh, two E uh, two. Sorry, <laughs> one E and a uh, two. One E and a two and three and four. And, sorry, because it's such a fast thing. It's hard for me to count. One and a two and three and four and you know what I mean? One and two and three and four and okay. <laughs> when you slow it down, it's a lot harder. One e and a two and three and four and Okay. So the E of the I'm just thinking about this because I'm off the cuff here. The E of the first beat is accented, right? Uh, then it's the second note, right, a, a second beat, which is the down beat that's accented, and then four and is accented. And I've heard Carlton Barrett do this, like you know, go play this this actual line, right? I've hit, I've heard him play that um, in a swing context, so you can because you can shuffle this reggae groove. And I've heard him throw that little 16th note in there on the first beat. Yeah, uh, I believe it's on the um, uh, Exodus album on the song Guiltiness, I think. Right? I think that's what it is. So that's a great album to check out is Exodus by Bob Marley. See, we're already getting into it, right? Uh, so that's another common uh, reggae groove. And this is all good stuff. Now, if you hear the album Exodus, one of the great grooves of that song, right? Because the, there's, there's, you know, the album called Exodus and there's a song called Exodus. You have something that's called a stepper. All right, and basically it's like four on the floor for rock. Right? Well, you would do the same thing except, you know, it just your uh, backbeat kind of would be on beat three. You know, if you wanted to do that. But uh, if, you, if you hear uh, Exodus by Bob Marley, it's basically... As is the song jamming. That has a step in it, right? So it's basically four on the floor, okay? So all you need to do is just go from this, your regular rock, to... And put any kind of hi-hat variation you want, right? By the way, you can also bark the hi-hat on the end of four with that hi-hat rhythm. Okay, so, you know, this is the style, right? It, it all starts from here, right? I'm not bearing the beater, let me do that. So let's talk about some uh, cool little uh, emphases that they that they that these drummers do, right? An emphasis in this music is uh, a lot of times you'll hear one, two, and three, four, right? Right in the middle of a groove, right? Now sometimes they do it as a turnaround, but then sometimes it'll be dead smack in the middle of the uh, four or eighteen bar phrase. And you won't even you won't even see it coming, and they'll do and they'll do that, right? That's one of the things. Um, 
Another one I've heard is one, two, three, and four, right? So I've heard. I've heard that. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm always looking for cool things that some drummer's doing in the reggae genre that I can grab. And, you know, something that catches my ear and I go, ooh, I want to use that. Because if I have it, I can play it on other reggae grooves and make it sound kind of hip or where I would like it to, uh, to be uh, in, in, in addition to what's going on with the band to make it musical or more musical, right? And that's the whole point is, you know, uh, it's got to be appro appropriate, appropriately in context, within context, right? Uh, so we want to make things sound as musical as possible. Another one is this. I've heard uh, one, one, two, and three, four. All right, so basically uh, an eighth note, two eighth notes on beat one, and then just your drop on, on beat uh, three, right? And sometimes you can, like, make some of these little uh, emphases. Emphasis? Yeah, I guess. Uh, some of these emphasis rhythms, I want to call it. I'm trying to talk it, uh, intelligently here today, but... It might not be working. <laughs> I want to put some of these emphasis rhythms together to see if they sound coo cool. So, uh, you know, if I'm playing to either a record or um, a band, you know, if I'm playing a, a gig, I might try some of these out uh, in inappropriate spaces that won't, you know, make anyone mad, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, and it, something that won't distract. So I might try to see what I can come up with. So that's just a few things. Um, another great contribution—a contribution that I just found out, which I didn't know—he was the drummer on this record, and I love this tune um, by uh, South Africa. I think he's South African, South African uh, reggae artist Lucky Dubé. Uh, and there's a song called Romeo, and it's like one of his big songs, right? And I was always floored by what the drummer did because it's it's one drop reggae, but he does fills like this, right? Right. And I mean, you know, so recently I was like, I have to look that up, like who that is, because it's not on Wikipedia. So I can't look at Wik Wikipedia. So I looked it up and it's Isaac Michelli, uh, who was on the uh, Graceland album of um, Paul Simon. And if you don't know that record, uh, Graceland, you should get it because it's some of the great drumming, uh, of course, from a lot of things, you know, aside from other things that Isaac Michelli did. But Isaac Michelli is a great player. Uh, a great concert that he's on is the Graceland concert uh, that Paul Simon did in Africa. I don't remember which part of Africa. But um, it's a great concert, and he's playing with awesome musicians. I mean, you know, the musicians are awesome. And I remember hearing this drummer and going, wow, that guy's awesome. So when, you know, I always had a a, 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 um, a liking for Isaac Michelli, Mich or Michelli, 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 who cares? Uh, so when I found out he was on this record, it, I, I just did a double take because this was like recently this year. <laughs> It took me that long to look it up. I know, uh, but when but then I'm like, well, of course, because he's got all those cool, you know. When I put when I pieced it together, I'm like, well, okay, of course it's Isaac Michelli because that's something he would do. Interestingly enough, so it's like, duh, right? So there, um, in the song Romeo by Lucky Dubé, the groove goes like this. And he does some cool stuff that I think he coined. Was was he his turnarounds would be on the end of four out of nowhere. He would just slam that down. And 
I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> Seriously, I've been doing that ever since. Like, I will use your traditional Carlton Barrett, Sly Bun- Dunbar, uh, Phil's. But I find myself these days doing more like Isaac Pacelli kind of thing, you know? <laughs> you know, keeping true to the, the style. So, I mean, that kind of goes to show you how far reggae went. You know, if you look at the history of reggae, I mean, it, it went everywhere. And because why not? Because it's a great style. And, you know, uh, now I'm not saying you couldn't find this in the music, but this is what reggae is not for the most part. When you hear one drop, right. You know, I've heard that uh, or heard drummers do that. Uh, 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 but that's not what it is. Now, I'm sure that's been recorded somewhere. But there's a reason why one drop is called one drop. Now getting into uh, uh, a different kind of grooves that reggae does have. Now, I heard uh, Sly Dunbar on a live record with Peter Tosh doing Down Presser Man, which is this. Now, he didn't play that on the live thing. You know what he played on the live version? Right. And it was awesome. I mean, awesome. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, the very guy that played this thing, that one one drop thing, he, he turns. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't play and talk into the mic at the same time. I get distracted. <laughs> this is the very guy that. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do with that? Right. So, I mean, you know, this is just some of the things that, uh, you know, that we hear in this music, which is very important uh, because that's where, you know, like I can tell, usually I can go and tell um, if a, re- if, if, well, not a reggae drummer, but if a drummer knows his reggae or not, like it's, it's for people who know the style or any style for that matter, you can kind of tell if they really know that style. Or if they're kind of just like winging it and they don't really know, like you can t- you can kind of tell, like you can tell if someone really knows how to play jazz, you know, like if you see this, <laughs> yeah. like I've seen people do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's like now nah. <laughs> that person doesn't never had any any training, uh, which is okay, you know, if he's not a jazz drummer. I mean, you know, but then if you hear a jazz drummer do this, I mean, that sounds like a jazz drummer to me. So clearly, you know, if I hear a jazz drummer do that, he knows his stuff. If I hear a guy go, uh, I already know. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. He he knows what he's doing. He he knows the style. He's done his homework. And you know that's the thing is you know my my thing is I'm trying to leave no stone unturned, right? Uh, uh so there's a reason why we have music and you know I, I i like to stay true to the music because that's kind of where we get all of our information from i guess you know i mean like uh you know it, it's good to be a music fan so getting back to the records okay so obviously the one of the best places to go is bob marley pick any actually pick all the bob marley albums go ahead and just check them out you know, uh, Bar Marley and the Whalers. Um, you can check out Peter Tosh, right? He was he was a whaler as well. He was part of the Whalers. Um, not for long, but he was. Bunny Whaler, he's pretty good, right? Uh, Black Heart Man's really good. That song by Bunny Whaler is called Black Heart Man. I like that a lot. Um, Torch is another one. Right? He's, he's more of a modern reggae artist uh, who's very good. Morgan Heritage, there's a great band, anything by Morgan Heritage. 
um, you know, you'll hear you'll hear these guys, uh, you know, mainly roots rock reggae, which is uh, uh, which is what the style is under roots rock reggae. OK, uh, Damien Marley, there's another one now. Damien Marley is more uh, dance hall. Right, so he's very uh, uh, right, or um, another 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 combination would be a right dance hall, uh, which is great. But then he has, um, uh, but then he has uh, other um, reggae songs that are one drop, right? More traditional one drop. And that hasn't really changed. Like, if you look at the uh, uh, the majority of reggae artists, most of them are one drop, you know, roots rock reggae. All right, so um, you can look at uh, uh, what's her name? Um, not Aaliyah. Uh, there's another. I forget. I don't know how to say her name, but she's really good. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll put it in the description. Um, uh, but there's a bunch. There's a bunch of reggae artists that you could check out. I mean, you know, old and new, right? Right, old and modern. It won't really matter. Uh, you know, as long as you do your research and you can check out all these great guys that are, you know, on these records. And, you know, I'd say the best place to start would be Bob Marley. You know, Peter Tosh and the Whalers and what have you. And then you, know, you go from there and you see uh, what people have done. You know, Steel Pulse, all that stuff. Uh, burning spear you know I mean there's so many uh, but if you want to follow the line it starts with you know Toots and the Maytals Bob Marley you know that kind of stuff um, because you know it's also you know with if you have Bob Marley right let's say, say you have Bob Marley right here find out what he was listening to in back of him you know like who came before him right and then who came after him kind of thing and and and, and kind of continued that line and you'll find a lot of cool drummers, you know, definitely. You'll find a lot of cool drummers. And then when you get into uh, geographically, like what happened with reggae and where it went, you know, I mean, there's so much music. I mean, we have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'm still finding new stuff, you know, in the reggae genre. <laughs> Actually, in any genre for that matter, because, you know, there, there's so much music and, you know, to... There is a myth or there there is, a I think, a common myth that, you know, and these are usually musicians that don't know either musicians that don't know anything or they're not musicians. Uh, you know, there's a there was an argument or uh, there's a tendency to think that musicians know it all, meaning know like all the music. That's not that's impossible because. Well, it's impossible. I mean, uh, it's it's it's. It's basically the equivalent of trying to get to Mars. I mean, it's you're, it's gonna take a that would take lifetimes. I mean, you know, I don't know if we're gonna get to Mars in my lifetime. I don't know, but uh, the point is, is it, you know, there's always thousands of songs coming out a year, so to to know all that, but then know everything else. I mean, it's physically impossible. But people, some people do think that, and I've I've heard that, and I've seen that, and I'm like, that's not that's if you really like drill down that thinking it's pretty ridiculous and that's an impossibility beyond okay uh it's good to keep getting knowledge of course right you know finding new music and you know uh, all that stuff but anyway so i'm gonna stop here because i i i don't want to overload anyone's head uh and there's so much to this style i just wanted to uh maybe break some of the myths behind reggae what it is and what it isn't you know what's what's in the music um but again i'll always tell you to go check the music out because it's there's it's there's really it's really a great um uh, unique style you know like i've i've never heard a style like that and i you know when you think about it you know no other style is like that uh, if if you really draw it down, you know, and you really like look at it with a <laughs> like a fine, you know, magnifying magnifying glass or a scope, whatever you want to call it, you'll 
you know, if you have if there's any intelligence behind behind what you're trying to do, you'll come to incredible discoveries with this with, with any music really. The deeper you go and I mean there there are rabbit holes in music of course, but you know, we're not trying to do that. We're just trying to be music fans and play the music, right? So I'm going to stop there, but check those out. Check out Bob Marley, check out Peter Tosh. Morgan Heritage, you know, all these guys, you know, the Whalers. I mean, there's so much music. I mean, you know, and most of these guys that have, like maybe have split from bands, right? Find that and then go find those individuals. I guarantee like ma the majority of them start their own solo stuff. That's like the same genre, right? That's usually like the big thing is, uh, uh, oh, Chronix. Chronix is a great reggae artist too. He's pretty good. Um... So check him out, you know. I mean, uh, any big band, right, you know, like the Whalers, usually they go, you know, like w when when they kind of split or when some of the people split from there, they went off and did their own thing. You know, you find that uh, actually pretty often. So that's a little bit of a nugget um, if I ever had any. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure did. I wasn't expecting it to be this long, but that's what happens when you're, you know, having fun. <laughs> so, all right, guys, see you for the next one.